What's up, beardos? I'm, uh, I'm imaging tonight, and uh, I figured I would kind of show you guys what I'm, uh, what I'm working on, and uh, we'll go through. And uh, if you can't tell yet, I'm actually images imaging the Crescent Nebula, and I'm using my uh, Hyperstar system. So this is a lens that's attached to the front of the telescope with a camera on, on, uh, on top of that. And the idea there is that that short, shortens the focal length of the telescope. Uh, it shortens it from 2,800 millimeters uh, to 560 millimeters. And what does that mean? So 2,800 millimeters, it's a 280 millimeter scope, so that's 280 millimeters aperture. And if you divide the two, uh, you get f10. So that's the speed of the of the scope. How how much light it can gather based on the focal length and the aperture. When you shorten the focal length, so the way that you shorten the focal length is there's a secondary mirror. So the light will come into the back of the telescope, bounce to the front of the telescope, and then bounce back to the back of the telescope. And that's how these reflector telescopes will actually gain focal length without having to like build these massive, uh, you know, these mass massively long scopes. So uh, what you do is you actually remove the secondary mirror in the front. So you have this huge light bucket that's collecting light and uh, uh, bouncing it to the front, and then there's a, the camera's immediately capturing it, and uh, that speeds it up actually quite significantly. So the the um, speed difference between an f10 and an f2 is 25 times. So I can gather light. So the, this subframe that you're looking at, um, the equivalent amount of light I would have to collect at f10 to get this much signal is 25 minutes. Uh, these are, I'm taking one minute exposures. Um, so it saves it quite, quite a bit more. Now, the other thing that it does is it actually will, because the focal length is shorter, you'll get a much wider field. So I get a field of view that's closer up, uh, more narrow than my GT81 scope by William Optics, which is you know one of my favorite rigs, and uh, a little bit narrower. Uh, but uh, at a, I can collect light at a much faster rate. Um, so I would typically would need like a, oh, I would say to get this much signal uh, as what you're seeing here, maybe about five minutes of exposure. Um, I also have, uh, I'll go through it another day. I, I uh, got this uh, nifty little tool on the front to remove the diffraction spikes. Uh, I use like 3D printed and uh, I got the idea from the Ray's Astrophotography uh, YouTube channel. Check him out if uh, if you haven't. He's he's got a lot of really great tutorials. So I've removed the the diffraction spikes with the 3D printed part, and I'm getting like super tight stars. The focus is really good. I'm very happy with um, the results that I'm seeing over here. There's you know the stars are very round, lots of signal. Only one minute exposures. I mean, you can't beat that. Um, one thing I did want to talk to you guys about is like focusing. So how do you focus on an image like this? Um, I, I usually run the autofocuser actually, uh, and I'll do a video actually where I'll go through how to set that all up. Um, I'll do that another time. But one of the things that you want to look for is this half flux radius. Um, the half flux radius is basically, it's a, it's a measure of the average size of the stars on the image. The lower the number, the higher your focus. So if you think about like when you want to focus, you want to focus on a particular point. And you're and you're trying to focus at infinity, basically, because these things are so far away. Um, and so what you what you're looking for is a really, really tight half flux radius. In my case, because of the equipment that I'm using, I'm looking for something like under 2.2 half flux radius. Um, but I will say it really depends on the rig. It depends on uh, whether you're oversampled or un undersampled on your camera. You can look all that stuff up. I'll, I'll do um, a video on those as well. But all of that comes into play when you determine what the right half flux radius is for your um, your image. I'm looking at it from a gut feel. I know that under two at this focal length is going to be really good, especially with the camera that I'm using. Uh, in this case, I'm using uh, ASI 1600mm camera. I, I'm 
looking at that and then looking at this this number to determine whether or not I'm you know out of focus. Uh, the autofocus tool here is like amazing. Uh, the other thing I want to talk to you guys about is I'm using these days I'm using multi-star guiding. This is like amazing. You guys definitely need to use it if you're not using it. It's like a waste of guiding uh, not to use it. I was dithering right now, so it's it's uh, I'm going up, so it dithers every three minutes. But it has improved my guiding so much. Um, as bad as this is, 1.47, I know there's people online who are getting like less than one. And I do get that with my other rig, which I've never gotten in the past. This is way better than I, I'd ever gotten, believe it or not. What does it do? So it improves two things as far as I can tell. Well, let, let's first go through like how you actually set it up. To set it up is very easy. You just go in here on the little brain. You hit guiding and you check this, use multiple stars. And then to select the stars, I just go to tools, auto select star. It'll select the star that it thinks is best and a bunch of the other stars. And then you just guide just normally. Nothing else to do. So as far as I can tell, it improves two things. The first thing that it improves is it almost, I don't say eliminates, but significantly reduces the seeing conditions problems that you might be having. And an example of the seeing conditions, uh, you're being affected by things in the atmosphere, you know, maybe clouds that are passing, uh, things that you don't usually pick up with or that you might not pick up with your camera. Um, and so those things, especially when you have a single star, will affect your guiding significantly. Uh, in the case, uh, here it eliminates that because you're looking at multiple stars at once and then determining if they're all moving or if just this one star is moving. So it really improves that. The other thing that I've noticed that it improves is for a long time I was thinking like, man, I'm just like my polar alignment's not working. Like how am I not able to get these um, awesome results when it comes to guiding? And then I realized it's because I don't have the greatest guide camera. You know, there's people out there who are using cam guide cameras that are hundreds of dollars. And uh, my camera is like a hundred dollars, right? I'm using, right now, I'm using like a really old Orion Starshoot Auto Gutter, which still works after all this time. But uh, it really helps with that if you don't have like the most expensive or the greatest guide camera, because again, it's looking at multiple stars at once. And so, some of the issues that you might have with your sensor uh, where it's like not sensitive enough or too sensitive in some cases or whatever it really eliminates uh eliminates that and again like you know, it's about the dither right now but like 1.17 i'm using a rig that has a maximum payload of 50 pounds and i've probably got i've got the edge hd on it i've got the hyperstar on it i've got a guide scope on it uh, i've probably got at at least 40 pounds on it be honest with you guys and uh uh so to to have this good a guiding on a rig that's way overburdened with weight really is uh amazing and right now it's dithering so you gotta ignore that part of it um okay that's it thank you guys again if you really like these videos and you want to see more of them if there's specific things that you guys want to see let me know in the comments. Please hit the subscribe button if you're interested in seeing more of these videos. That would be an indicator to me that I should be putting more and more content out. Um, and uh, I appreciate you guys for, uh, for watching. Thanks. See you later. Bye.